All right, now we're going to take our Bibles this morning, and uh, I want you to take your Bible, turn to Luke, the book of Luke, chapter number 16. In this story this morning, Jesus tells the story of two literal men who died. After they died, their soul went to two different literal places, the rich man and Lazarus. The Bible said the rich man died and in hell lift up his eyes. The Bible said Lazarus died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. But then it said, uh, uh, since these two guys died and went to two places, I want to tell you, tell you about this in verse 22. Luke chapter 16, verse 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lift up his eyes. Now, look at that, people. Those are the words of Jesus Christ. You say, well, I know a preacher that said there wasn't no hell. Are, are you going to listen to him or are you going to listen to Jesus? He said, I know a preacher who just said hell's just uh, the grave. Are you going to listen? He, he lift up his eyes being in torment. That's not a grave. That's not a grave, y'all. Look, you cannot believe the Bible and not believe in hell fire. It's impossible. I don't like it a bit more than you do. This is one of the hardest things for a preacher to preach. It's what I'm going to preach today. Some subjects I really enjoy preaching on about the, about the Bible and the second coming and heaven and all that. This is the hardest subject for me to have to deal with. But he said it. And in hell he lift up his eyes being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. This man was not in the grave. His body was in the grave. His soul was in hell. And it said he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy upon me, on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. I want to preach this morning on the subject, why people go to hell. Why people go to hell. I, I know we're living in a time when this is absolutely almost unheard of. I, I, I challenge you to tell me the last time you've heard a TV preacher or most radio preachers preach a whole sermon on hell. All the people that listen to me on air, all the preachers that listen to me, when's the last time your pastor preached a sermon on hell? I don't say that to try to say like we're bearing about it. I'm just saying something's wrong with the preachers of our generation when we shy back and shy away from the doctrine of hell because we know it's not popular. Now look, it's going to come down to you either believe it or you don't. And if you're going to believe the words of Jesus Christ. I heard one preacher say, well, we know that, I, know, I understand, I know what the Greek word says, I know what the Hebrew word say. I know about Tartarus and Gehenna and Hades and, um, and, um, uh, the, the Sheol, I know about the Greek words and Hebrew words, but no matter how you cut it, the Greek and the Hebrew teaches there is a place of torment waiting on people that don't know the Lord. There is. The Greek teaches that. Jesus himself. You say, well, what about that verse that says they're, they're all going to the grave? Yeah, I know. What about that verse that Jesus said, uh, you'd be better off to never been born than wake up in hell fire. That's pretty easy to understand. That's no interpreting. That's no going from one language to another. That's the English, and it's very, very clear. Now, look. You know how we know the. You know how we know there's a hell. We know there's a hell because the Bible says there's a hell. In Deuteronomy 32:22, the Bible talks about the lowest hell. In Job 26:6, 6, the Bible said hell is naked before them. In Psalm 9:17. It said the wicked, differentiating from, from good, the, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. If it's just the grave, everybody's going to the grave. There's no reason to even say that. Psalm 55 and verse 15 said, let them go down quick into hell. Proverbs 7 and 27, talking about the whorish woman, said her house is the way to hell. Proverbs 9, 18, talking about the whorish woman, said her guests are in the depths of hell. Proverbs 15, 24, the Bible said, depart from hell beneath. 
Isaiah 5 and verse 14. The Bible said hell hath enlarged herself. Weird cause it calls hell a, a female in it. Think about that. She herself. Isaiah 14, 9. It said hell from beneath is moved to meet you. Ezekiel 31, 16. I cast him down to hell. In the New Testament, Matthew 10 and verse 28. He said he's able to destroy both soul and body in hell. I didn't write the Bible, brother. My job is to preach the Bible. And I will tell you this morning, that's not easy. I'm flying right in the face of everything the world believes in and teaches. And all philosophy and all education and all politics are completely against what I'm saying this morning. But I'm going to take my stand upon what this book said. There ain't never been a mistake proved in it yet. I think you're safe as long as you say what this book said. And this book says over 50 times there's a hell. There's a hell that people go to. I'm not happy about it. I'm just telling you about it. Matthew 18, 9. He said you're better off to have uh, pluck your eye out than have two eyes than to be cast into hell. Luke 12, verse 5. It said, uh, hath, hath not um, cast into hell fire. 2 Peter 2, and verse 4. Tells about the angels in hell. Uh, about fallen angels. Revelation 20, and verse 13. Talks about hell. And delivered up the dead which is in them. In Luke 16, this scripture that I read to you today. That in hell... The man lifts up his eyes. And Amos, it tells us where hell is. Hell is beneath your feet. Hell is beneath. You know what? Science has proved that the Bible is right. You know, if you go out there and dig a hole, the deeper you get, the colder it gets. You'd never think hell was down there. And the Bible said it. Do you know when that volcano blows up? It ain't ice cubes coming out of that thing. It's fire, brother. That's coming spewing out of the belly of this earth. And that's exactly so science, scientifically, the Bible is true, saying hell is below your feet. You mean to tell me you're going to take a chance? Everybody listen to me. You're going to take a chance on going to a place that science has proved that the Bible says there over 50 times, and the world subconscious believes in it. They talk about it all day long. It's hell this and hell that and hot and hell out here and he can go him to go to hell, them to go to hell, and I hope he goes in hell. They talk about it all the time. Subconsciously, down inside them, they know there's a place past the grave where people go when they die. That means, that means that the most important thing in the world for you today is to be saved and know you're saved. If you're here this morning and you don't know you're saved, I'm begging you. I'm warning you. There is a hell. Don't take that chance. I, they, they, they laugh about it and talk about it all day long. So let me give you a, a, a few reasons this morning why people go to hell. Uh, the first one I would say this morning, number one, it would be this. It would be people think they have to give up too much to get saved. I've been preaching a long, long time, and I know people... That, that, that they'll say, preacher, you're right. I agree with you, but I just don't want to give this up. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's a lifestyle. Maybe it's a habit. I was preaching in a tent revival down here, I think over here in Taylor, Port Taylorville somewhere. Oh, yeah, it's been many, many years ago. And there is a parking lot, and they had a, like a fence out there around the parking lot, and they had a tent set up. And I preached it, it was summertime. And I was soaking wet with sweat, and I screamed and hollered, and I preached on hell, and you ought to get saved, and you ought to get saved. And there was people getting saved. And I noticed there's a boy, teenage boy, back there in the back on the outside of that fence, and he's holding on that fence just looking in at me like that. And I don't usually do this, but I felt, I just felt a strong nudge just to go back and talk to him. So I went around, went around the fence back there, walked back there where he's at, I walked to him and I said, hey, buddy, uh, what's your name? He told me. I said, uh, man, are, are you saved? And he said, no. And he held on that fence like that. And I could tell the Lord was dealing with it. He was like he was in a, in, a, in a decision where he couldn't make a decision what he wanted to do. And I said, why don't you come get saved? I said, I'll go up there and pray with you. You don't have to feel awkward or nothing. I said, why don't you come get saved? And he said, I don't know. I said, he said, I, I just don't. I'm not ready to give up. I said, it's smoking pot, ain't it? I don't know why I said that. It just popped out. He looked at me and said, yep, it is. And that boy said, I know if I got saved, I'd have to quit smoking pot. And I, I went back up to the, uh, the, and I prayed for him. And I thought, you know what that guy's saying? He's saying, I'm going to take a risk. I'm going to risk my soul. 
forever and ever and ever and ever in a place of torment to smoke a joint of wheat? Does that make sense? No, that's like saying, that's like saying, uh, that's like saying, well, uh, I, I, got a, I got a penny, but I want to hold on to it, and you're going to get off me a million dollars, but I don't want to let go of this penny. That's what that's like. Listen, y'all. You say, well, I don't want to quit drinking. I got, I got some news for you. You're going to quit drinking either way. You're going to quit. It's just when and how. For what reason? You're going to quit. You're going to quit smoking weed. You're going to quit partying. You say, well, I ain't going to quit. I heard a country singer or something nut going on. And he said, if I ain't no whiskey in heaven, I don't want to go. I thought, well, you idiot. There ain't none in hell neither. What do you think you're going to do? What do you think you're going to do? Down there and get drunk? What do they say? Well, I don't want to go to heaven. There ain't, no there ain't none in hell. What in the world's wrong with you? You're going to have to quit either way. You've got to quit. I don't care what it is. You say, well, I don't want to give up my woman. You'll give her up one of these days. Lord, the time she's she through with you, you'll want to give her up. you think, I went to hell for her. I went to hell. Listen, there ain't nobody worth going to hell for. There ain't nothing worth going to hell for. There ain't no job. There ain't no money. There ain't no fame, no fortune, no popularity. It just don't exist. There ain't no such thing as that. People think they have to give up too much. Amen. That's right, brother. All right, you're getting rags for riches. You crazy? Listen, you don't do it. Number two, number two. I will tell you this morning why people don't people don't get saved. They they think they'll be criticized. Now that keeps a lot of people from being saved. They've sat around at work and they've heard how people talk about Christians and they're talking about all the people in church as hypocrites and all the preachers are crooks and all. And they say, I don't want them talking about me like that. So I'm not going to get saved because I'm afraid of what my my friends will think about me. Well, think about that now. Look, you know, some people, uh, they say, well, they'll, they'll say something about if I got saved. They did me. When I got saved, my friends did have plenty to say. One of my buddies that we played ball with, uh, it got back to me. I hadn't been saved a week. And uh, they, they said, uh, so-and-so heard about you getting saved. And he said, you wouldn't last two weeks. And that hurt my feelings. I mean, I was 18 years old, just got saved. I was going to try to live right. And it hurt my feelings. I thought, man, that hurt me. You know what? I got over it. I got over it. And you know something? Look, people are going to talk about you if you live right, and people are going to talk about you if you live wrong. People are going to talk about you if you're in. People are going to talk about you if you're out. If you, 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 people are going to talk about you if you, if you do good. People are going to talk about you if you do bad. Get used to it. You say, how do I know? Because you talk about them, don't you? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. I, you talk about them, and, and people say, well, I'm just saying, she talks about everybody, she talks about that. And you're talking about that person for talking about other people. And, and you know, the, the truth is, we all run our mouth a lot of time when we ain't got no business saying nothing, and sticks and stone may break your bones, but I ain't going to let no word take me to hell. Amen? That's right. Uh, years ago, I, I uh, just had this church service, and I, I preached. I'd done some kind of presentation on hell, and I showed, back when I was doing slides, and I showed slides on the, on the screen of, of, of hell and a car accident. And uh, one of our preachers is sitting in the back of the church, and he said there's three young men sitting back there in front of him. He said they're sitting right in front of me. And he said these three young men were sitting there, and he said one of them in the middle Looked to be much younger than the other two, like 17, 18, maybe 14, 15, the guy in the middle. And he said, when you start giving the invitation, he said, then people started coming. People started coming over here. People started coming over there, getting down on their knees, said, I'm getting saved. I'm getting saved. And he said, I saw that younger boy. And he looked over to this older boy and he said, you want to go? And he said, oh, boy, said, huh, 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 like that. And he said, in a minute, he looked over to the other boy and he said, you want to go? And the guy said, huh, I ain't going. And he said, that young boy just stood there and stood there. He said, he wanted to go. He wanted to go to the altar. If that older boy just took one step, that boy got saved just like that. And he said he stood there because he thought the, it, the, the hardest thing for a young boy or girl to do is go against the kids that are older than them and make them give you know, their life at him or something like that. And, and that boy stood there and he turned around and walked out of that, that church that night Lost without God. That was 30 years ago. I'd hate to think of where them three boys are right now. I hope they got saved. But more than likely, 
there's a good possibility that young man never got under conviction again. Are you hearing me this morning? You know, and he looked around. Brother, when he's in hell, he'll look around and say, I don't care what you think now. It don't matter. It don't matter now. It won't matter then. It don't matter. My friends made fun of me. They laughed at me. I had them gang around me over at the Hardee's in Morgan. And, I mean, football players, cheerleaders and everything, pointing their finger at me. And said, Danny, you've gone crazy. What's wrong with you? You don't do nothing. Like that. that hurt my feelings. But I'm going to tell you something. That's been, that's been over 40-something years ago. Right now, I wouldn't trade nothing in this world for the choice I made that night. I'm glad I'm heaven bound with a hammer down, brother. I'm not going to hell for them. I'm not going to hell for her, him. You or nobody else. I'm glad to say this morning, people are scared they'll be criticized. You know, something you don't want somebody to do something nowadays, just ridicule them. Americans are terrified of somebody laughing at them. Hey, some of you sitting in here right now, you only put a bumper sticker on your car, you're afraid somebody might think you're a fanatic. Scared to death. My goodness. I mean, good night, man. Uh, be a man. Be a woman. So I'll take my stand. If they don't like it, that's too bad, brother. I, I don't agree with what they're doing either. People think they'll be criticized. Amen. Number three. Number three. Four. Number, uh, number three. People think they can sin and get back. People think they can sin and get by. You know what? People go to hell. People think there's no consequences for my sin. I'll, I'll slip through somehow or another. I've got more to do than worry about me. There's a lot worse sinners out there. I'll slip through the cracks. Maybe there'll be a big crowd and going into heaven and I'll just go in with all the rest of them. They, they think they can sin and get by. But the old Bible said, be sure your sin will find you out. The Bible said the wages of sin is death. The Bible said whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. This old book teaches, brother, you don't get by with sin. I don't get by with sin. Nobody gets by with sin. Movie stars. I, I saw a picture uh, of, uh, of, the, of the Jackson 5, Michael Jackson, all your brother. He, he was a cute little fellow, about that high. And uh, all them little boys there. And they said, here's Michael Jackson. It must be his birthday or something. It had been popping up on social media or something. Or they, anniversary of death, something, I don't know. But they had Joe Jackson, the daddy. And Marvin Gaye, they all sitting there, and that cute little boys, they had no idea. They had no idea. Michael Jackson grew up in a Jehovah Witness home that did not believe there was such a place as hell. And he got deceived little by little. Then came drugs, then come perversion, and then come all kinds of bad stuff. And little by little by little by little by little, his life got worse and worse and worse. He didn't get by with it. He didn't get away with sin. Neither will you. Nobody else has ever got away with sin. Neither do you. Elvis didn't get away with it. Elvis didn't sin and get by. He paid for it. His life and possibly his soul. I don't know. Uh, John Belushi didn't, didn't get away with it. Marilyn Monroe didn't get away with it. Sin always gets you. The Kennedy family didn't get away with it. Jimi Hendrix didn't get away with it. John Lennon didn't get away with it. Uh, Janis Joplin didn't get away with it. Uh, 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 Jane Mansfield didn't get away with it. Brian Jones, the Rolling Stones, he didn't get away with it. Jim Morris, he didn't get away with it. Uh, Robbie McIntosh, uh, and that uh, heroin overdose, the average white man. Gary Thane of Uriah Heat. Benny Taylor of Shanana. And uh, Ron McKernan of the Grateful Dead. Keith Moon of The Who. And Vaughn Scott of ACDC, who wrote the song, Highway to Hell. He didn't get away with it. He's partying. Night, overdosed on alcohol, threw up, couldn't throw up, on his, uh, choked on his own vomit, and died and found out you cannot sin against God Almighty and get away with it. Be sure your sin will find you out. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning, but if you're here and you're not saved, you don't know you're saved, get it right. Get it right today. Get it right today. Uh, uh, Frankie, I know people think this is child abuse. Uh, but Frankie has me the other day. He said, Dad, uh, Daddy, if, I'm not, if, we're not, I'm, if I'm not saved, if we're not saved, we'll go to hell. And I said, yes, you will. He said, I wouldn't tell a kid that. What are you going to do, lie to them? It ain't a sin to tell your kids there's a hell. They need another. You say, well, it'll, that's torture to a kid. No, tell them the good news that Jesus saves. And his blood can wash your sins away. And you don't have to fear going to hell. Look, people, this ain't a romper room we live in. This is a fallen, cursed world of sin. It's time to do business with God here today. Your time's running out. Your time's running out, big boy. Your time's running out, ma'am. Your time's short. If you're alive in here and you're in your right mind, you're very blessed. 
Better take advantage of it. People think they'll be criticized. People think they can sin and get by. Oh, Ted Turner, who owned the Turner Broadcast, TNT, Turner Network, a TV network. He was criticized. I'm criticizing Christians, hate Christians. You know what he said? He said, well, to you, Jay, he said, I lost my faith. He said, I he said, I've had a few drinks and a few girlfriends. If that puts in hell, so be it. Now, let me tell you something, friend. Them words will come back to haunt him one day. And it ain't a few drinks and a few girlfriends that put him in hell. It's his rejection of the blood of Jesus and the cross. You don't, you don't go to hell because you cuss. You go to hell because you won't receive the blood of Jesus to pay for that cussing. You, you don't, people don't get die because they get sick. They, get, they die because they don't get the medicine. And the medicine will make you better. You can't sin and get by. Number four. And I'll be through. Number four. You listen. You know why people don't get saved? You know why some of you here this morning you're not saved and you don't get saved today? Because you think you got plenty of time. That's the biggest excuse people hear. I know it. You're right. Going to do one of these days. Not yet. Not now. Remember before I got saved? You know my testimony. My mom taught me there's a hell when I was little. Mom used to go through the house singing, Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, I want to go to heaven. Hell is an awful, awful place. And that put the fear in my heart when I was little. And I grew up thinking that. And I had that, I never had that little old car, that little old MG I've told you about. And I came down from Nebo, uh, coming this way to Morgan. Because we're coming down, we played ball over here at the wreck over there at that wreck all the time. And I come down through there, them curves going through Nebo, little like that. And I'd be doing six, 70 miles an hour, just seeing how fast I could take them curves. And that little old car. And I remember the thought crossed my mind one time. I said, boy, you're going to wreck one of these days. And, that, and, and you're going to wind up in hell like your mom said. And I put it out of my mind. And I think about it once in a while. Well, the church I got saved in. These boys, we used to go out there and bounce the ball all night long, like camping out. We'll go up there on the church steps and just sit there and talk and cut up and laugh. And I remember sitting there on them church steps. And I remember thinking, man, I ain't going to cuss here. I'm on church property. And I knew, I mean, I know the church ain't a building. I know, but in my heart, I thought I ought to have enough respect for this place not, not to cuss. Funny, a lost person like me had that, and Christians, some of Christians don't even like think that's wrong. But anyway, uh, I remember I, I thought like that, but I wasn't saved. And I remember thinking, I'm going to get it one of these days. Something's going to happen. One of these days, something's going to happen. And I remember thinking, I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait. And I'm. And long story short, I did get saved that night at Nebo Revival. Thank God for it. I sure am glad I did. I'm glad I didn't wait. If I'd have waited that night, I might have waited the next time. Might have waited the next time. Might have waited the next time. Listen, people, nobody in here today, nobody in here today knows for a fact that you're going to be alive at 1 o'clock. Today, me, you, nobody. Else. Oh, why you're just scare tactics? No, why? Why does me telling the truth bother you? It shouldn't bother you. It's the truth. It's the truth. The healthiest person in here. I don't know who that is. Dax probably. Uh, 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 if you, if the healthiest person in here today is not promised one. Bible said, "Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth." Ah, uh, you can take every vitamin in North Carolina, brother. Lift weights, you're blue in the face. Fall over dead tomorrow. True. It's true. People think you have plenty of time. Somebody said the clock of life is wound but once. No man has the power to tell just when the hands will stop at late or early hour. To lose one's health is sad indeed. To lose one's wealth is more. To lose one's soul is such a loss nobody can restore. And that clock keeps ticking. And it don't wait on nobody. Said years ago. Probably heard this story. They said the devil. Met with all his demons. Now it didn't happen like this. It's just a, a, an illustration. Devil met with all his demons. Down there in the underworld. And they was all sitting at a big long table. And the devil got up and he said. We got to figure out some way to get. More people down here. 
How are we going to get people to go to hell? And one little demon jumped up and said, I know. Devil, devil, I know. Let me go. I'll get them. He said, what, what you got in mind? He said, I'm going to tell them there ain't no God. Oh, that's a bunch of bull. They don't have to believe that. And I'm just telling them. Said, yeah, let me go tell them that. And the devil said, yeah, that might work on a few educated people. But anybody with any sense knows there's got to be a God. Really, I mean, really, people, come on. You, you, can't, you can't believe that everything come from nothing unless you've been to college. So nobody's that dumb naturally. You have to be taught that. It's a scientific fact, people. Something can't come from nothing. There's got to be a God. Got to be. 99% of the people know there's got to be a God. There's got to be. He said, that won't work. So the next little demon said, Mr. Devil, let me go. I'll go. I'll go. He said, what are you going to tell them? He said, I'm going to tell them there is a God. And that God made everything, but it's not the God of the Bible. It's just some unknown deity somewhere, some force that created everything. And then he went off somewhere in other universes and stuff. And, and we don't have to worry about it. And the devil said, no. He said, that won't work either. He said, people know that book. There's something special about that book. People know, even the people that cuss it and hate it, know that there's something different about that book. And the next little demon jumped up and said, I know, I know, let me go, Mr. Devil. He said, what are you going to tell them? And that little demon said, I'm going to tell them it's all true. I'm going to tell them there's a heaven. I'm going to tell them Jesus is real. I'm going to tell them the Bible's true. And he said, I'm even going to tell them there's a hell. And all the other demons went, oh, what? And he said, but I'm just going to tell them not to worry about it today. You can do it some other time. And the devil said, that'll work. You got the job. And ever since then, that little demon's been up here in church services, just like this right here. You sit back there, you're saying, he's right. Everything he's saying is true. But no, nah, not today. You see? You see how you're getting tricked? Years ago in this country, there's an old, but now, uh, UK actually, an, in, an infidel named Bob Robert Ingersoll. Ingersoll was one of the most famous agnostic atheists of the uh, 19th century. He died, I think he died in 1899. And he would go around giving speeches on how the Bible was ridiculous and wrong and full of mistakes. And he's a very smart, educated man. And them thousands and thousands of them country people, who I couldn't even read, hung on every word he said. And they said he's getting ready to give a speech one day about the Bible. And some old guy hollered out back there in the back and said, Make it good, Bob. There's a lot of us depending on you. We're counting on what you're saying now. You're telling us ain't no hell. We're trusting you. I hope you're right. He wasn't right. He wasn't right. Today we have, uh, what's that weirdo atheist? Uh, Billy Marr that comes on HBO. Billy, he's an idiot. Trying to tell people the Bible's a joke, making fun of God's word. You say, you shouldn't talk about him. He shouldn't send people to hell like that. And old, what's his name? Uh, Ricky Dawkins. Oh, Ricky. Oh, that Dawkins that made a video, made a, made a, the God myth, and made a movie called The God Myth. Let me tell you something, buddy. The day will come. The day will come when he'll find out he was wrong. The day will come when all will stand before God. You say, well, Brother Danny, I just, I've had people tell me, they just say, that, that couldn't be true. They couldn't, you couldn't be, you, you couldn't, uh, how could you think that a good God could send a, a person to hell? And the answer is, God don't send you to hell. You reject, he won't say, let his son die for you to keep you out of hell. You go to hell because you choose and spit in the face of what he done for you and walk right over the blood of Jesus and he will not let you go to heaven. You know why people go to hell? They think they got plenty of time. And the truth is you don't. Now here this morning, every Christian, I want you to pray. I want us to stand with our heads bowed. I want Miss Desi to come and play softly. While our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Nobody's moving. Nobody's talking. I'm going to ask you this question. Are you saved? Nobody's looking around. 
It's between me and you. I ain't going ain't nobody gonna come to you and embarrass you or nothing like that. I just want to ask you a question. Are you saved? Maybe every head's bowed and every eye closed. She's playing softly. This is your day, friend. Christians pray for Holy Ghost conviction. If you're here this morning, you've never been saved. Maybe you need to come. Maybe you come and say, Preacher, I'm not saved, or I don't know if I'm saved. Then I want y'all to pray for me today. Would you pray for me, Preacher? Just let us pray for you. Just here. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Raise up that hand. Slip it up. Slip it right back down. Thank you. God bless you. Several hands going up here this morning. Maybe there's some Christians here this morning. You got a lost loved one that's not saved. You got family members of it that you're not sure about. Maybe come this morning while, while we're getting ready to sing. Get around this altar and pray. If you lifted your hand here this morning, I beg you today, ma'am, sir, don't let this change pass you by. You're here for a reason today. God let me preach this for a reason. If it's your day, settle it today. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit of God, I pray that you touch these that lifted their hand. Lord, rebuke the devil away from them. Make it easy for them to come this morning, Lord. To come to you and be saved by your grace. Lord, I pray that you'd help every person here today. Lord, these that have lost loved ones, God, help us put them on this altar. Now, Lord, do what ought to be done right now. Touch us, we ask. Do what ought to be done right now by Holy Ghost conviction power. In Jesus' name we pray, and for his sake we ask it. Amen. Amen. We're singing. If you have a lost loved one you want to come pray for, if you need to come, come on right now. Let's sing. Jesus. Come on. Come on right now. Come on right now. Maybe you lifted your hand. Maybe you need to come. Come on right now. Ladies. Ladies. There's some ladies over here. Amen. 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 Father Amen. Father Amen. 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 Come on now. Ladies. He's tenderly calling you today, friend. You come right now. Come on right now. Come on right now. Jesus is calling the weary Amen. Amen. Talk. So I need you to say it. Amen. Tell the greatest story ever told. Amen. Amen. Bring him thy burden and thou shalt be blessed. You come this morning. Come on. Amen. He will not turn you away. Take now. Calling today, calling today. Jesus is calling. Jesus Amen. Come on, young man. Come on, come on, right now. You know what you need to do. You know what you need to do. Why are we saying? Amen. Others, 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 Waiting today, waiting today, waiting today. Amen. Come with Amen. thy sins at Amen. his feet, lowly bow. Right. Come and no longer oh, delay. Say now, come Amen. today. How is today? Calling today. Amen. Jesus is calling. It's tenderly. tenderly calling. Let's sing one more verse. You need to come. Come on now. Amen. Jesus Amen. is pleading. Amen. Oh, Thank God. To his voice. Amen. Hear him today. Hear him today. Hear him today. Amen. They who believe on his name shall rejoice. Quickly arise and away. Come on now. Call. Lean today. The Lord's calling you today. Are you going to answer? Are you going to answer? Amen. Jesus is calling. is tenderly calling today. We're playing softly now while these are still praying. There's a lot of people in here this morning. God knows your heart. 
you may not, I know that people online, you may not like what I said, but you're not going to accuse me of not preaching the Bible. What I told you this morning is in the Bible. Plain as day. Plain as day. Might be, I might be a sorry preacher, but I'm going to tell you what's in this book. Amen. Amen. That, that's, that's all I know to do. I don't know anything you can do to improve on that right there. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that will believe. God's plan. Nothing you can do. No kind of gimmick. No kind of trick. No kind of coming in sideways in the back door. Ain't going to work. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them which believe. Amen. Thank God for these. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, Miss Daisy. All right. Clear. All these things made things right with God. Saved. Got right. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's good. Praise the Lord. Now look, we'll be back here at uh, six o'clock this evening, and uh, I, I'm gonna preach something I think will help you to get through your life day by day by day tonight. I know you you struggle sometimes. All the stuff, schools starting, all the bills. That, good night. Did anybody get hit hard this summer on your taxes? I, went, I thought, what? It was awful last year. It went up 25%. On, and everything hits you all at once financially. And so uh, come tonight, come tonight, and we're going to learn about how to make it day by day. That's the best way to live. All right? Heart's clear. Now, look, if you're not signed up to get baptized, uh, get signed up on the sheet right here. If you've been saved, but have not been baptized, sign up. Baptism service will be next Sunday night, 6 o'clock. Then, uh, of course, don't forget, uh, we're going to sing Saturday night. And we're counting on all of y'all planning on going with us. 15 to 5 Saturday evening. Free trip down there. Free supper. Can't beat that. All right. All hearts clear. Let's pray. Brandon, go ahead and dismiss us. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we thank you. For